Hello everyone, it's Astri, finally back with another painting process video uh, because my wrist is finally better, uh, it's not completely healed yet, I'm not sure it ever will be, but now I'm able to draw for a few hours every day without being in excruciating pain, so hey, that's pretty awesome. So I don't actually have the time to make this video, but I really wanted to check back in with all of you now that I'm finally kind of back to my regular routine. So in this video, it's kind of just going to be like the other process commentary videos I've made. I'm kind of just going to talk about the choices I made during this painting process and what my thought process was behind them and everything. So hopefully some of you can learn something from it. So before we uh, get started on that stuff, let's talk briefly about what I'm actually painting here. So this is a commission for a friend of mine. Uh, he's also the one who commissioned the Junara painting. And he commissioned this from me in January. So if you have been following me, you know that at the end of January, my wrist basically uh, died. Um, I, <laughs> I worked way too much and my wrist tendonitis got inflamed once again and I was just unable to work for uh, a few months. So uh, I got started on the commission, I made the sketch and that got approved and everything, so we kind of began the process, but then I had to take a break. So, so during that break where I was basically forced to not draw, I realized a lot of things about my own art and I kind of learned a lot of new things without uh, drawing just because I, I finally got some room to think without having the stress of needing to draw constantly. So you'll see that uh, in the process video, once I actually get back to work after my little break, you'll see that I start making some huge changes. And um, I will talk more about that once that happens, but... So keep that in mind that I started this commission in January and I finished it a few days ago. So when I got the brief, I immediately knew I wanted to do some sort of a power pose. This is a human paladin who has seen a lot of battle. She's, uh, I, I basically got the sense that she was kind of a tough character and I wanted to portray her as such. And I also wanted to show off her spear somehow, uh, which kind of limited my pose options a bit. So I ended up with two pretty standard standing poses, one with the typical heroic knee up deal and then one that's just uh, plain up and down standing. I talked a bit with the client about which one he preferred and we both kind of agreed that the one with the knee up was slightly more interesting, there was just a bit more going on, even though the standing one is also nice purely to show off the armor, we wanted to go with something that was slightly more dynamic, even if this is also kind of a stiff pose. So once I finished that rough sketch, I turned down the opacity as always and I start sketching the body on top and then I start sketching the armor on top once I have the body sketched down. So she's wearing like one of the most clunky armor sets <laughs> that are in the game. I, I don't know the name of it, but it's basically the human foot soldier armor, I think. And um, I, I was really doing my best to keep it iconic, but to also tone it down slightly, just to make it a bit more realistic. <laughs> so just did a rough sketch of the face. If you have any, if you ever watched any of my videos, you will know that I don't place a lot of emphasis on the sketch. So this is all basically just placeholders so I can put down my colors later on. And I'm also working a bit on establishing the value structure. I really wanted her to pop out against the background, which is going to be this sort of like an archway. Uh, basically my vision was that she's standing outside some sort of hall and the hall is being lit by a bunch of torches. So it's really bright and orange. And then she's standing kind of outside in not like moonlight, but in kind of like colder dusk light. So I really wanted to play up that contrast of her being more cool toned and the background being really, really warm. And you'll see that in my base that looked pretty good, but once I started placing the color blocks on top, I really lost a lot of that contrast. Yeah. 
Here I've dark darkened her entire silhouette just to make her pop out more. But the lights I'm adding uh, just aren't doing it for me. I'm not really um, achieving the value structure I want. So I'm struggling a lot using overlay layers to try to figure out some sort of lighting setup that will work. And then I think I ended up with this sort of backlit, really hard lighting setup. And I was happy with that at the time, but you'll see soon that uh, that didn't last for long. Because I, here I, I was thinking a lot about playing up the pink versus the teal. And I kind of got trapped in like wanting that to really pop. And so I ended up with this color palette that didn't necessarily look the best. It looked a bit like too in your face. But at the time, um, I was actually pretty happy with it. Just sketching out her face some more. I really wanted her to look not necessarily masculine, but I, I wanted her face to be very hard and um, tough like she's actually seen battle. And I'm just painting over my sketch further, trying to erase those lines. As you can see, I'm making a lot of adjustments to the background, trying to fix it. And yeah, okay, so this is where I came back from my break, and you can see that immediately I just start painting over everything. Because the previous um, sketch was just so... It just looked so artificial, and the value structure wasn't reading at all, and I just was not happy with it at all when I came back. And there's a few different reasons for that. So I'm gonna take some time to explain kind of what some of the things I realized on my break. Uh, so I'm just going to not comment too much on the painting process right now, but, but as you can see what I'm doing is I'm just painting over everything um, and trying to re-establish the color palette before I start refining things again. So basically, over the past kind of two years, I've noticed something... I've noticed that something was off about my art, and I've never been able to put my finger on it, but like, whenever I saw the thumbnail of my art in between all the other art on our station, for example, you know, when you look on the front page and there's all these little thumbnails that are right next to each other, I always felt like something was lacking from my art. And I could never put my finger on it, but there was just something that was wrong, something that didn't look good at all. I just felt like my art was kind of lifeless and I didn't know why. I, at the end, I kind of chalked it up to me just being unable to view my own art ob objectively. And I think that's kind of uh, true. I don't think we can ever really view our own drawings completely objectively. But now I know that there was something more to that. And to explain how I got to that realization, we need to go on another tangent. Um, and this is kind of a crazy story, uh, but I I'll try to summarize it as quickly as I can so we can actually talk about the painting because I know that's why you are all probably here. So this spring I had the absolute pleasure of going to Schoolism Live Florence. If you don't know what Schoolism Live is, it's basically this workshop uh, hosted by Schoolism and Imaginism Studios where some of the best artists in the world come to present uh, and just share, share their knowledge. And um, I went to school in Florence because uh, a lot of great artists were speaking, but one of my all-time favorite artists, uh, whose name is Carla Ortiz, uh, she was hosting one of the workshops. And if you don't know her, she's done a lot of work at Marvel. She designed Doctor Strange. She also does a lot of Magic the Gathering cards. She's just a brilliant artist and such an inspiration. Um, so I really just wanted to listen to her talk live, listen to her share her knowledge. But at the end of the workshop, we all had a chance to meet the presenters. And um, <laughs> I met so many amazing people. Uh, and it was just so cool overall to just meet artists. I've never met any digital artists before. And it was just an insane experience. But the most insane part was that I got to talk to Carla Ortiz. And she gave me a portfolio review, which is just 
completely insane. I never thought that would happen. Um, but that <laughs> did happen and in like one minute she gave me some of the best advice I've ever heard. So she basically took like one look at my art and she said like, yeah, this is good, but um, all of your edges are super hard. Like all your edges are very crisp uh, and that takes away from the focal point. And then she said that also your lighting is not tangible at all. She said, I've, I really got the like fantasy uh, foggy lighting down, but that none of it really felt that real. And that really made sense. Like it made something click in my head that yes, I do make all my edges super hard because I'm terrified of having a painting that looks unfinished. So I overcompensate and I, I just go way overboard on the rendering. And yeah, my lighting doesn't look tangible because I've been skimping on my studies and I've I keep like uh, making up these unrealistic lighting setups just for the sake of composition or kind of as a crutch because I don't know how to make it realistic. And um, she told me I should start doing film studies uh, every single day for like 15 minutes just to get a read on both edges and uh, tangible lighting. And I started doing that of course because if Carla Ortiz tells you to do something you go do it. and. Within like two studies, I had kind of recognized a lot of the things that were, that I was doing wrong, that I've been doing wrong for over a year. And what that is, is first of all, like she said, all my edges are very hard. So doing these studies made me feel a bit more comfortable with leaving some of them looser because it made me realize that like anything that's remotely out of focus that will have less of a crisp edge. And so that's something I was really trying to implement in this painting and also my my previous painting uh, of Severad there. I also tried to keep my edges really nice and loose. And secondly, it made me realize that yes, my lighting had been very unrealistic, but that another thing that was happening, which is kind of a byproduct of the lighting, I think, is that all of my colors are so incredibly desaturated. I had no idea I was doing this, but I've just been, for some reason, I've been so scared of using saturated colors that I was like mostly operating in like the gray, the more gray zone of the color wheel or, or the color square, I should, I should say. And I had no idea I was doing that, but that's why my paintings look so weird compared to other other people's paintings because they're so desaturated and they look so lifeless somehow. So yeah, that's that's what I I realized, um, and I've been doing film studies as often as I can, and it's really been helping me get a better grasp on all of those these things, and it's also really been helping me just like wake up my observation skills a bit more and I kind of just feel refreshed and I feel this insane drive to just make a bunch of more lively paintings. I really want to use more saturated colors. I really want to start playing around with lighting more. I want to have better values and I want to achieve a more painterly style. So um <laughs> There's no way Carla is watching this, but if you are, thank you so much because your advice literally changed my artistic life or whatever you want to call it. But um, yeah, that was just a huge eye opener for me. And so that's where my focus is at these days. And that's what my focus was at. With this painting, I really wanted to get some nice saturation in there and I wanted to make the lighting feel somewhat tangible. And you can see kind of that where I'm at now already it does look a, a lot more like fantasy-ish uh, already. Like from that initial overpaint I did, it's now looking much less realistic. And honestly, I'm kind of okay with that because I think realistic lighting is great, but I also love just playing it up a bit to make my compositions pop a bit more. So here it's not completely realistic, uh, but at least I'm, I'm trying to get those saturated colors in and I'm trying to keep my edges looser. So I'm trying to focus my like rendering around her face and her shoulder pads and kind of like her uh, torso and of course the spear. And then I'm trying to leave the rest pretty much loose. 
I ended up not quite achieving that because I'm st I still have this this habit of like going over everything obsessively because I just I'm so scared that that I'll send the client the final image and they'll say this doesn't look finished put another three hours into it and I don't know why I'm scared of that because that's actually never happened in my life no one has ever asked me to tighten up anything uh, people have asked me to like edit a small part of the painting but never like complained about how it looks unfinished so I don't even know why I, I feel like this but yeah that's still something that's really ingrained in me and I'm trying to work on it by by continuing doing kind of like rough studies uh, I haven't been posting them to social media because I'm trying to just focus on learning I don't want to think about like how many likes it's gonna get on Instagram I just want to think about how to improve my technique I have been sharing them with my Patreon Discord though, just to kind of like let people know what I'm doing and to to get some uh, some feedback. But yeah, I'm trying to not let social media rule like my artistic decisions anymore. I'm trying to do more of what I want to do. You'll notice that I haven't been posting that much uh, since my wrist got better, and that's. Partly because I've just been super busy, you know, uh, with freelance, it's kind of like it's really dead for a while and then you get one big job and suddenly you have like four big contracts and everything just comes at once. So that kind of happened to me and right now I'm just drowning in a lot of work. So that's part of the reason why I haven't been posting, but I also just, I don't feel like I want to like sit down and just do a sketch for Instagram. I, I don't want to do that anymore. I'm just so sick of it. I would much rather focus on my technique and then once that's kind of up to par again, then I can start sharing the stuff I really care about, you know? So yeah, I'm actually, I'm kind of happy that my whole break happened in a way. Uh, like it still sucks. It still sucks that my wrist isn't healed yet. Like it's, it's, a burden it makes my daily life worse but it's also it's just made given me a lot of time to reflect on things and I'm, I'm really grateful for that so going slightly back to the painting now uh, I'm just going over everything and refining and refining and refining one thing I'm focused on a lot in addition to to the edges and the colors is that I want to make every uh, every single object read as the material it actually is. So I'm focusing a lot of a lot on texture. I want to make sure that her collar looks like it's made of leather and that the tabard looks like cloth and that her emblem looks looks like it's kind of like I'm tr kind of imagining like solid gold that's been painted on there and I, I really want to make that texture read. Also with her pauldrons uh, in game they're very like bright metal that don't have a lot of shine to them so I'm trying to like to somehow paint that plate metal while also giving like a slight nod to the in-game look so I'm trying to make it not super contrasted. And I'm also working a lot on defining the backlighting and with the backlighting you'll notice that I'm using kind of a very saturated yellow for the outer rim and then I'm going straight into a very saturated orange so I'm making my mid-tone the most saturated point and that's how you you basically make a warm light source show up on objects <laughs> wow I'm explaining myself so poorly like if you have a really warm light it's a lot of people's instinct to just go straight into like a bright orange light on the character but really, that warmth will show up in the midtones because of subsurface scattering um, and other things I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so I'm making my my highlighted portion very bright and yellow. Uh, it's still very warm, obviously, but then I'm taking that warmth that I'm injecting it into the midtones. So 
So more refining, I was very frustrated with this piece uh, with her armor because I, you know, I love my like elven detailed ornamental armor. I love painting all that. So with this, because it's basically just a tabard and then a bunch of plates, uh, I was really struggling with how to make it look detailed enough. So I tried tried adding like some patterns of, of my own. And I also think I kind of fell into my like over rendering compensating crap because I, I felt like it didn't look finished no matter what I did because it was kind of just like big, big empty pieces. So I'm just trying to add some more definition to it to make it a bit more interesting. And I think I was able to stop myself before it went like crazy. Uh, so I'm very happy with that. But there was definitely like two, three hours at the very end of this that were kind of just like frantically rendering, trying to make it look finished. I really want to place more focus on my structure and my composition and just my base. I want to make sure that my sketches read as like final artwork almost. I'm done with the whole polishing a turd thing. <laughs> like I've been there, done that. It's not satisfying. I'm not happy with it. So I really want to improve my art kind of from the base up. Okay, so here I'm giving a bit more definition to the background that was sorely needed. Uh, I'm very uncomfortable painting buildings and per perspective things, so I tend to oversimplify them. But here I'm forcing myself to add in some more detail to just give it a bit more interest, uh, but still trying to keep those edges very loose. More defining on some areas I had been neglecting, like the staff and the hands. <laughs> the hands always come last for me. I wonder why. Um, going more in on her face, as you can see when I'm kind of zoomed in, there's still not a lot of detail in her eye area especially. I wanted to keep everything somewhat loose, like in my previous paintings I've kind of gone in and drawn eyebrows, um, no, not eyebrows, um, eyelashes and like individual eyebrow hairs and pores and most people aren't going to see that when they zoom out so I, here again I'm trying to make sure that my base is reading correctly, uh, that all my gradle shadows are uh, reading nicely and that everything looks the way it's supposed to read. So here I'm playing a lot with color lookup because I realized that my lighting setup had kind of deviated a lot from my original intention, you know, that of her being like very dark and blue and the background being very warm. Uh, that had kind of gotten lost in the rendering and everything. So I'm trying to work with some adjustment layers to make that, to kind of like include that once again. Um, but I'm not really getting it. I'm, I'm switching a lot back and forth. As you can see, I'm very unsure of what to do because I don't want to make, to give it like this, this artificial look at the end. Adjustment layers are a great tool, but if you overdo it, you'll end up with this kind of, yeah, it just artificial weird look. Uh, that's kind of uncanny, so I try to use them as minimally as possible. But finally I got to a point where I was kind of happy. I tweaked the, the values and the colors a tiny bit, but not too much. And then I just went over everything with one, one final like rendering uh, pass to refine some of the, I guess, neglected parts <laughs> once again. Um, and then I just did an unsharp mask and added my signature. And that was it. So overall, I'm very happy with how this drawing turned out, which is a very rare thing for me. Um, there's a lot of things that are not great, like her pose is kind of stiff and all the anatomy doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, her face is... there's something about her face that's bothering me. 
and I could probably figure it out if I wanted to, but I, I realized I was getting to this like noodling stage where I realized I just kind of had to stop. Um, if you're an illustrator, you'll know this feeling when you kind of, you know, you've just wasted the last hour and it's time to just like put down the pencil uh, and move on to the next piece. And that's what I've been, what I was feeling that there was no point, even though her mouth does look a bit weird. I, I'm at least very happy with her expression. And yeah, just, just how rendered, I would, <laughs> not rendered, um, just how saturated everything is. That's something I'm very pleased with. You know, I can see that I've taken my, what I've learned from my studies to heart and I'm trying to implement that. And um, yeah, I just want to learn. I just want to get better. I know <laughs> I didn't talk that much about my actual process in this video, but I kind of want to mark this off as like the beginning of kind of a new chapter of learning for me. That sounds weird, uh, but you know, I kind of consider myself an eternal student and all artists are, you know, you never master art, you're never finished. But I feel like I've been able to like refocus myself and I've been able to kind of refocus what I want to achieve with my art. And now I'm just all about doing more studies, learning more things and making each painting better than the last. That's always been a focus of mine, but I've kind of lost that recently. So yeah, I just wanted to, <laughs> to make that clear, I guess. I, I didn't want to just talk about like rendering in color theory for 30 minutes while kind of neglecting like the changes that have happened. So yeah, I'm gonna call it on that discussion for now so I don't end up rambling. But yeah, uh, so again, because my wrist is much better now, I'm still not fully on my usual level of production. I'm still lagging a bit behind because I, I need to take more breaks and I need to be a bit more careful with myself because I notice very quickly that stuff gets inflamed again if I overdo it. But um, that being said, this month I'm finally releasing another Patreon package. Uh, <laughs> I did like this big launch finally and then after one reward term uh, it just ended, which kind of sucks, but every everyone has been so patient and it's been lovely. So if you're not already a patron, if you pledge before May the 31st, you will be eligible for the rewards from this term. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient with me while I took this break. And I look forward to making more videos and becoming a better artist and sharing what I learn along the way with you.